Um, this is quite puckery. I'm used to shelf roads, but not a shelf road on both sides. I've never driven anything quite like this before. And I'm by myself. It's coming over these blind hills. It's like being in Moab on Hell's Revenge. Oh. The only thing that makes me okay doing this trail by myself is the fact that I've got the forward-facing trail cam in this Gladiator. This is a lifesaver. I didn't think it was going to be like this. I thought I was just going to be cruising through some beautiful BLM land in the desert. But uh, I didn't know I was going to get a heart workout. What's up everyone? I'm Matt and well, this is Rooster and thanks for watching those Arcoverland adventures. You may wonder what have I gotten myself into and that's a very good question. I don't really know the answer to that yet. The, the plan for today is to head to the Copa 
uh, National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, if you saw the last video, I went back into Yuma. I surprised Kara at the hotel because she and I had been apart for four or five days. And so I surprised her at the hotel and met up with her. So uh, got some work done this morning. It's now almost one, one o'clock. And Rooster and I are heading back out to, um, to, to see what we can find. I loved the Kofa wilderness so much that uh, that's where we're heading back to. We're gonna go into the southern portion today and that area's got more old mines. It's got a mining ghost town, a museum uh, that I really wanna go check that out. And I thought I'd start the day by taking the scenic route to get there. We are on a, a portion of the Arizona Peace Trail just north of Yuma. And I thought, oh, let's take the scenic route, uh, go through the, the mountains, through the BLM land, and get there that way. I had no idea that I would be literally driving on a ridge line, uh, some spots barely as wide as my Gladiator. So this has, this has had some pucker factors already. And based on what I can see or, or can't see at the moment, um, ahead of me, uh, this is going to ride these, these ridge lines for a little while. I know this section is about nine miles long and I'm about five miles into it. So, uh, here we go. <laughs> Wish me luck. Uh, spoiler alert, if you're watching this video, I made it. Sketchy at all. Yeah, don't like it. My view in here is the same as your view on the camera. And it is blind, and I am thankful for the trail cam. Oh crap. Where did I go? There we go. Aha, there's the road. I think that was the worst one of all. I'm almost off this. I legit thought that this was just going to be a beautiful, easy drive through BLM land to get to to get to Kofa. But no, I mean it's been it's easy. There's nothing technical about this except the nerve-wracking nature of being on a very steep ridge line with blind uphill to downhill corners. Like, if I didn't have the trail cam, legit, th this would not be doable alone. I mean, it would be, but you'd be getting out a whole lot in precarious situations just to check and see where does the freaking trail go. Almost done. Uh, that body of water is, I think, part, some offshoot uh, lake kind of thing of the Colorado River in the distance. All right. Out of that section, there was another section I was going to go run that I'm guessing, based on the map, is similar. Uh, but I'm going to skip that because I didn't think that was going to take near as long. And I want to get to Kofa and I want to see the old mining ghost town museum and some of the other uh, mines and stuff in the area. I will camp in Kofa tonight and then continue on tomorrow. Uh, so, I'm just going to sit down uh, this rough dirt road. Uh, yeah, my, uh, whoa, thing. Um, I 
it's just a little dirt road and uh, just a very short amount of pavement to get there so it shouldn't take too long unless this road stays this way driving just past that Cobra gunship and there's this Yuma Proving Grounds Visitor Center with all these old tanks out here on display and I could not pass up the opportunity to check these out. I know that's an old Sherman tank from World War II. Um, that's about the extent of my knowledge. I, I don't see an M1 Abrams here. So I'm guessing these are all World War II, Korean War, probably some Vietnam era tanks. They don't have any signage displays telling what they are, which is a bummer. My gosh, just imagine what it was like to be driving these across the battlefield. Dang, that's so cool. I'm guessing this is some sort of mine destroyer with the um, boom off the back and the plow here in the front I could be completely wrong but that's my guess some sort of mobile artillery piece there well that was way cool if some of my friends from high school happen to watch this video, they are going to be very ashamed of me for not remembering the models of more of those tanks because I used to know a lot more than I remember now. That information has been replaced with probably cheap stuff. But just a short uh, jog up the highway and we will be back in the Kofa National Wildlife Refuge. And I can't wait. First stop is the old Ghost Town Museum. Can't confirm. Sign is accurate. That is Castle Dome Peak right in front of us. I think it's the highest peak in this range, just over 3,700 feet. Stands out really well. So the mining operation here was in operation until the 1970s. Wow. It's crazy to think that man, this was potentially someone's house. I don't know if this has been restored or if this is just the way that it's the way that it's been all these years, but, oops, sorry, Rooster. But it really gives you a taste of what life must have been like here. This is one of the best museums that I've ever been to that really 
make you feel like you've gone back in time. <laughs> oh wow, they've got an old stagecoach. A lot bigger than I thought it would be. Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine living here and working here in the summer times? I wonder if they've got a 10 millimeter socket around here somewhere. Drill bits for getting through the, the mine. What a cool stove. Must have been the general store. Apparently the, the dentist. Ew. I can't stand going to the dentist in 2024. I can't imagine how awful it was back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Eesh. No thanks. A little church is cool. Pipe organ? Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. This is the sheriff's office. And check out this jail. Oh, well, he was in here a little too long. I think it wouldn't take much to get your way out of this. Shackles and ball. Wow, that's cool. Wow, this hotel is awesome. I guess this is the High stakes poker room. And the roulette wheel. This is the coolest place ever. I mean, they've done such a good job. I feel like I've been transported to the past. And it's not all like gimmicky and everything. And this place is free. So. If you're in the area, this Castle Dome Mine Museum, you gotta come here. I'm loving this. I mean, you can, there's buildings all over the place. You can go in all of them. I think it's been hours here. Oh, wow. Look at these old kilns. Oh my gosh, these are so cool. That is the biggest drill press I have ever seen. Well, I think you can spend all day just walking around exploring every nook and cranny of this place.
unfortunately, we don't have time. We need to find camp. And from here, we're going to go through what's known as McPherson Pass, get deeper into this southern portion of Kofa, and then once we're through McPherson Pass, camp will be a high priority. It's already 320. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get through McPherson Pass. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get through McPherson Pass, so we better head out. The sign at the turnoff said that McPherson Pass was nine miles down this road. So it's going to take a little longer than I expected it to. But I love driving through these, these cactus and it's just a real pretty, just a real pretty road. But being back at that, uh, that museum really got me thinking if I could go back in time I think the time period I'd most want to explore is sometime in the 1800s. Um, that Wild West days, um, you know, riding across the Western Plains on horseback, um, you know, early to mid 1800s, I, I think. Um, there's just something about that time period and, and being out here in the desert um, has just really got me thinking about that. There's just something about that that resonates with me. Just, just to experience that, you know, that sense of exploration and their freedom and the, you know, the land claims back then, the you know, little house on the prairie days. Um, but, you know, moving to Oregon Trail days without the dysentery. I uh, just, I, I think that would be so cool. Uh, so, I, I'm just curious. You know, if you could go back in time and live in a different time period, what uh, what time period uh, kind of draws you to it, resonates with you? That, that's mine. This drive through this McPherson Pass Trail, I think, is the best so far in all of Kofa that I've experienced. It is absolutely breathtaking. I keep finding myself straining my neck, looking up on the hillsides, on the ridge lines, just looking for wildlife. No luck, by the way. I have seen a few ground squirrels. About it. They don't stick around long enough for me to film. Look cute though. But this is absolutely breathtaking. There's about every form of cactus piled in this one spot that I've seen so far. Oh! 
Oh, that was harsh. I might should spend more time watching this trail than looking up at the at the bluffs. This is McPherson Pass. I don't know if it's the highest trail in Kofa. It's what, 1,927 feet in elevation. But it's at least the highest part in that, on this trail. Uh, real pretty. Well, it is 4.45. And I'm really thinking about camp. I would like to find some place uh, a little out of the wind because it's pretty windy through here. I don't know if that's possible. But at this point, I would like to be at camp in the next 30 minutes. I am optimistic that along this wash, Maybe in this uh, more flat area there, um, there'll be some good campsites. All I need is one. This looks like a lovely place to call home for the night. Yeah, I think this will do nicely. This was actually not far from where I recorded that last little bit. Um, it's private here, hidden behind the bushes. It's not far from the, the road, but I don't think there's going to be any traffic. And it's tucked in here on this hillside. The wind is coming through here, but it's very directional. And I can, I've got my tent positioned so that the hard shells get in the bulk of the wind. I think it's going to be awesome. What do you think, Rooster? Uh, Rooster approves. Yeah. Don't bite my ear. Good girl. I know some consider it heresy to come to an amazing place like this and bring the internet with you. But let's be honest. If, if that's you. If you could do your job and have meetings and upload things and access things here, instead of an office, you'd do it in a heartbeat. You know you would. Hey, this this beats an office 100 out of 100 times. Yeah, you know you would. Well, the meeting is over, and I'm hungry, and Rooster is hungry. Rooster is going to have um, her food. I think I'm going to have some, just some bratwurst tonight. Nothing fancy.
Well, the, because of my meeting, I wasn't able to show you the beautiful sunset. Just the way the light was hitting the, the edges of the mountains. It was quite beautiful. But hopefully, I will be able to show you the sunrise in the morning. Cheddar brats with mochetta. Simple and delicious. Mm. That may be the best broth I've ever had. It's time for bed. We'll see you in the morning. Good night. Over a Cinnabon from a gas stop a couple a few days ago. I forgot how big these were, and I bought two, and I haven't even finished one yet. Now, of course, with extra icing uh, because I'm 12, gotta have extra icing. But the plan for the day is continue exploring Kofa go more into the heart of this southern section. Um, I know there's quite a few old mines I'd love to find and check out, but just, just keep going into it and see what we can find. Soak in the beauty of, the, uh, of this little mountain range here. It's quite spectacular. We are off. Let's go see what we can find. I know I say this all the time, but it's it's exploring the new areas that's my absolute favorite thing. So there's there's an intersection up here. Um, gotta decide which way to go. I already know which way I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go right because it's going left. Gets you to the highway pretty quick, and I don't want to do that for obvious reasons. So I want to get deeper into Kofa and see what cool things lay around each corner. There should totally just be like a herd of bighorn sheep just up there on the rocks looking down. 
But there's not. I'm not convinced there's any in here. All right, we're about to exit this section of, of McPherson Pass and drive across that plain to the mountains in the distance. zoomies at camp this morning several times and is so tired but she is fighting sleep so bad she finally gave it up rooster has been such a good pup on this trip and this is the longest I've ever done a trip solo with a dog. Uh, all my solo trips that I've done with, with Oakley have been just overnighters. And then longer trips, Kara's been with me. So, this has been now six nights of just me and Rooster. And she has been so good. And it's been, it's been really nice having, having Rooster with me. I've really enjoyed it. Definitely some things that, you know, I would have done had I not had her, but no regrets. She's been so good. Just a great little Camp Richie. I was actually adding it up last night. Um, today is... March 1st and I have spent so far this year in the first two months I spent 15 nights camping and it has been glorious and of those Rooster has spent 10 nights camping so I bet Rooster's already spent more nights camping than than most people right in front of us is old mine. I'm going to go check that out. Well, looks like we have to walk in. The road here has seen better days. That's all right. A little exercise would be nice. There's this one old building here. Then a bunch of remnants of some buildings up there. That's a lot higher than it looks from back where we parked. Oh, there's a there's an arch up there. Oh good, there's a little information sign here. A Taurus Mine Cabin. The last structure standing from the North Star Company mining camp. Rooster? No, ma'am. Rooster, come. Get back here. Get back here. Though the town only existed for five years, many a 2,000 people lived here. Wow. That was a lot. Uh, I got the doors locked, but the windows are open. Oh, what a beautiful screened-in patio. I bet this was real nice. Heck of a view, too. Wow, what a, what a different life back then. Oh, some hardy people who lived out here.
Let's go see what we can find over there. Well, there's not a good way to get up there. Be cool to know what those old building foundations were for. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you're real thirsty. That was a good walk, wasn't it? Well, there's another mine uh, just a few miles down the road and around the corner. So we'll check it out and see what it's like. This is a very well preserved little mining area. Beautiful spot. Dang. The Rob Roy Mine. Fred White, discoverer of the mine, had a fear of being buried alive. That's awesome. I am carrying Rooster through here. She likes to get up under the buildings and get in the shade, and I don't blame her, but I'm really worried about her startling a rattlesnake or something that way. So those boards look sturdy enough to go further in. In 2024, it's hard to imagine what life was like living out here like this, working in the mines. I mean, because I mean, for me, this was super easy to get to in my Jeep. But I think back then, not quite as easy. What a gorgeous spot. You also got to wonder if the miners, you know, this was like living in the, in the city for them. Did they appreciate how gorgeous this is? Or is it just like, eh, I'm going to work today. Oh, well, those two mines are way cool. I love places like this with history um, of the area still intact and around and you can walk through it and get a sense for what it might have been like. But we've got uh, a little ways to go. So we're just gonna keep on, keep on driving and if we say something cool, we're gonna stop. out there.
Well, this intersection marks the end of this video and sadly the end of mine and rooster solo journey through the southwest Arizona Sonoran Desert. Um, it's been such a great time and she has been such a great pup. But I, I know going that way gets me back to the highway where I can then go and rendezvous back with Kara. Um, they have had an amazing time down here doing their rebel rally training. Oh my gosh, they have done so incredibly well. I'm so proud of them. But um, next video will most likely be uh, springtime in the Ozarks, waterfalls, deep water crossings, the stuff that we, we love to do there. Lots of beautiful scenery uh, springtime in the Ozarks. So that's the plan. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this series and I hope, I hope you get to come down here and experience some of this desert in the wintertime. It's incredible. Uh, but if you would give us that YouTube love, like, subscribe, all that stuff, uh, check out the Patreon link in the description. If you want to support the channel, gain access to all of our GPS data, uh, like from this trip, all the campsites and routes and stuff that, uh, that Rooster and I found, um, special content, special events that we do, uh, check out the Patreon link in the description. And for all of our merchandise, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. We're out of here. Thanks for watching. Bye.